So put yourself in this position. Your wife bought you an Omega Seamaster Professional 20 years ago as an anniversary gift and you have been wearing this exact watch for the last 20 years daily. And then it happens that one day you're walking through a shopping mall, the spring bar decides to give up on you, the bracelet falls from your wrist, the watch lands face down on the marble floor. So reluctantly you bend down to pick it up and you notice that the crystal is in perfectly fine condition but the seconds hand has come undone. The hour and minute hand you cannot set anymore so the movement is basically poked. So you take the watch home, you explain the story to your wife and after working out that it would cost in excess of a thousand Canadian dollars for the watch to be repaired, your wife says to you, why not just buy another watch to enjoy for the next 20 years? Now this story is so eloquent and simple and that's mainly why I liked it so much. I liked the idea of a 20 year old Seamaster being uh, replaced by some modern alternatives and the pieces that Stephen chose really says something about his eye for detail and seeing these two watches side by side for the first time really made me think. It's well worth sharing the story just because of the complete opposites that he decided to go with in the end. Now at first the thought of Rolex did cross his mind as a replacement but then he tried to factor in the price and the value for money and what he would be getting from other brands. So he decided for his first choice to get a Tudor Pelagos left-hand drive, a watch that has been discussed often, it's been praised all over the place, and I've said a few times that it is a very innovative watch in the Tudor line. What I think that's so great about it when we compare this to the Black Bay is everything about the watch is Tudor's character, down to the dial, the details of the snowflake hands, the snowflake dial. We have a left-hand drive function, so the watch is more comfortable on the left wrist. The date complication has a nice roulette wheel style, so the red color matches the color of Pelagos. The piece is made fully from titanium. It has a very innovative bracelet design and clasp design that is one of the best in the industry. So it's a terrific choice. For everyday use, for its purpose, it is superb and he has been wearing this watch religiously for a long time. What I like the most about it is just the sheer contrast between black and white. There is such a stark difference. You can read the time so easily when you look at the dial relative to the bezel and the general layout. And for the price you're spending on a piece like this, it really packs such a punch. So this watch became his daily wearer and he really enjoyed it. He loves the, the wear and tear, he loves the finish, the patina, the way that the titanium handles itself. So while he was away on a business meeting to Norway, he found a watch shop in Frankfurt Airport and in the window was the Great White Seamaster, a watch that has just been released as of November 2019. So he thought back to a video that I did, which is quite flattering, and just thought about the way I discussed it and what I appreciated about the watch. He tried to look for videos about the watch online but there weren't any and he thought since time was money and he was just about to depart that he would pick the watch up. So in his collection he now has a Tudor Pelagos left hand drive and a great white Seamaster Professional. Now on paper when you hear that you think okay that's pretty cool, it's interesting but when you actually see them side by side that's where your perspective changes. These watches are complete polar opposites and it really took me by surprise just seeing the difference between them both. What I like so much is that he didn't really follow the appeal of a Rolex piece and he did in fact consider a Rolex in the very beginning. But when he factored in the price and the value for money he decided on Tudor and in the end also bought an Omega and would have more money to save afterwards. So two extremely competent dive watches from completely different areas but ultimately are so fascinating in the way that they pair off. So let's have a look at them quickly. Where we see that the Pelagos has this stark contrast between the black and white making it very easy to read at a glance. We look over to the Seamaster and it is the complete opposite. We have white on white with a contrasting black on all of the numerals and plots on the hour and the minute hands and then you have this bezel that ties it all together. The stature of the two watches when we look at just how much of a purposeful piece the Tudor appears as a watch to be used in an active rough environment, the Seamaster has a more dressy kind of nature and this is the way that Stephen is going to be wearing the watch. The Seamaster becomes his practically everyday wearer 
while at the same time the tutor will be used for the more rugged activities like when he's hiking, when he's mountain climbing, working in the garden. And I just find looking at these two brands how they look so similar but are so different. They use the same basic color schemes of red, black, white but they handle the, the approach so differently. Just looking at the bezel differences and how the bezels have been executed with regards to the printing, the layout, they couldn't be more different from one another, but do approach the concept in a similar way. And then we think back to his original Seamaster. Of course, I said, you need to get that watch repaired because it is practically an heirloom at this point. But the fact that he returned back to the Seamaster and picked up one of the most interesting models that they've released in this new lineup I think it's just such a great story. He never approached these watches with the idea of value retention, with the thought that these watches will be great investments or that you'll be able to sell them off one day for a good price. He bought these watches to wear them. I look at these two watches, the way that they present themselves, and what I like so much behind this simple choice in a collection is that they are both, I would say, the pinnacle of what each brand is trying to achieve. Where the Tudor Pelagos approaches its language of the snowflake and the Seamaster Professional exemplifies its language with the way it presents itself. Both of these watches are practically the top tier of their respective categories and just the sheer difference of color is enough to tell them apart. I think enthusiasts from all spectrums can look at these two watches and appreciate the choice, just seeing them together for the first time. The first impression that I had when I looked at this was there was a lot of thought that went into the choices behind these two watches. The owner of these two pieces has an eye for detail and it can be seen when you have these two watches side by side. So this story is well worth sharing because it's, it's so basic in its entirety. It's not something that's trying to be grandiose. These two watches are at the top of their league but they are by no means expensive in the scheme of things. And it's great when you consider that these two watches together wouldn't have equated to the price of a top-end Rolex sports watch. I think we can all agree that these two watches work extremely well together. And we should all congratulate Stephen for his choice. Very keen eye, and I know that they are going to serve him well.